Welcome back, everybody. We've got the Victory World Cup back for you with our final match of the stream today. We've got Spain versus Hong Kong. But first of all, Costa, did you see that match that we had just now versus Italy and Indonesia? We had some very interesting teams. I would be a liar if I said I did not see it and did not love it because it was amazing. You had the, the fact that, of course, you've got the Xerneas, which is such a strong restricted, one of the strongest uh, in general whenever any restricteds have been allowed in the VGC format, uh, regardless of year. But then you've got it going up against not only a Kirin White, you just see it going up against an Aurorus, which was actually brought in that last game. I mean, huge credits to Nicholas there. I mean, I love the idea behind the team. It made a lot of sense to certain archetypes, but you do not want to be staring down that fairy aura, god, goddess, whatever you want to call it, Xerneas, because it is just too much to handle as long as of course uh the pilot is able to manage it quite well and we saw francesco did incredibly well he did get a bit of burn there from the heatran which we're not used to seeing much in the current meta as well especially if it's like an assault fest um uh, flame body activation was amazing but then again i think francesco just had the correct tools and played well enough to try to position himself and he was able to do it and he gave italy that great great first win Indeed. And now we're going to see uh, another very accomplished team, Spain, um, who yes. are no stranger to Pokemon in its essence, as uh, they've gone undefeated in their uh, qualifying stage and are ready and raring to take on Hong Kong mm -hmm. in the group stages here. So we're going to head over to the uh, summary of the, the two teams mm -hmm. as we see they are in group five along with south right. korea and puerto rico to boot as well um and it's the first stage to go into so um awesome. we haven't seen too much from either teams just yet but uh both players that we're going to be featuring have had some success for both their teams as well Oh, definitely, as uh, they are going to be bringing a lot to the table for both of the teams, uh, as we're going to be switching over, transitioning to the current match, Spain versus Hong Kong, to see the current standings. Of course, there are no current standings. Both of these uh, teams have not been able to play as of yet, but we are the lucky people that get to see the first match and bout between the both of them you can see some uh, very familiar names uh, i'd say uh, on both sides of the field more uh, predominantly being on the spanish side only due to uh, their consistent uh, you know viability with uh, the presence essentially spain is just one of those countries that has just been going uh, for many years now in vgc and they've been uh, able to build a very very strong community behind them so i'm Absolutely excited and ecstatic to see what Hong Kong could go ahead and bring to the plate right now. You do have that Bruce Lee inspired uh, Urshifu Rapid Strike logo, which I absolutely love. And of course, I do uh, have to give a shout out to the Dragonite there as well. Um, but yes, so let's get, of course, into the action between these two players, as we do have uh, not a stranger to Victory Road, that's for sure. We've got uh, Manuel uh, Barrea. Um, a victory road circuit winner qualifier champion and septito galar qualifier champion as well top 32 and champions cup so very good achievements very recent ones as well rocking the tally rex ice rider incineroar uh cantonian zapdos tapufini amundis and the mimic so quite an interesting team composition here david Absolutely. We do not see much of Calyrex ice going around at all, or even really any Trick Room teams uh, at all. Um, it's usually the slowest Pokemon you see is probably Incineroar, uh, maybe, and maybe Amoongus going around too. So Manuel, in the past two weeks, he's had two out of two wins for Team Spain. So he's been um, really well done, really, uh, especially in week one he won for in versus norway and a week two he beat none other than marco silva of mm, Italy. Wow. um both in both weeks he was using kyoga teams um both a little slightly different as well but uh -huh. obviously he switched it up completely into this um game here obviously found something very new and something he quite likes yeah, uh, we're going to go over to our next opponent here from hong kong it's luang pak hai uh 
hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, this time, he's got the Kyogre team here. Um, and believe it or not, this is actually the same team that he ran um, last week. Oh, okay. So uh, going back to basics, of course, Leon uh, bringing that familiar core, uh, like you said, David, that they've used in previous weeks. It makes uh, it's quite viable. You know, you've got the classic Torn Oda team accompanied by that Incineroar, Regia like it's Serena, classic. But then you've got the Ditto. The Ditto can absolutely change the momentum of a game, dependent, of course, on what kind of item it has as well. And Leon is uh, quite a veteran uh, pilot in general, a trainer, should I say, as uh, their accolades have been quite impressive in the Hong Kong scene as well. Top eight in Hong Kong regionals in 2018, Hong Kong regional champion 2017, and the national champion of the seniors division in 2016. Yeah, so he's got some a uh, bit older accomplishments here. So he's he's definitely the veteran player going into this, and he will probably know from 2016 as well how good Kyogre was then, and he's using it again in the modern day present here too. So we're going to go into the team selection screen now, mm -hmm. as we're going to have, have a think about the little leads we can go for here. So yeah. on Manuel's side, Calyrex. And the rest of the Trick Room team is going to probably be, I'd say, the main way to go for him himself here. Kyrex also having the Trick Room option for itself as well as being very offensive with uh, its very powerful moves in that Glacial Lance mm. spread type ice move it has. Uh, but a couple of ways to get up the Trick Room too in that Mimikyu and the Calyrex. And it'd be up to uh, Luang here to see how he's going to deny that. Um, but if I'm well, well, I'm scared of that ditto because no matter how well you do and how much you boost up, that ditto can always come in and just copy all your boosts yeah. and take it from there. Well, exactly that, especially if, for example, it may not be carrying a choice stuff. We've seen in uh, uh, quite uh, successful teams in this current meta, uh, the item choice uh, kind of varying. We've seen Enosh actually bring a Citrus Berry, I believe, um, which had a lot of validity to it because he could actually bring it in Trick Room matchups, which this is what uh, Leon does have to go up against right now, try to uh, you know manage their board position as best as possible and maybe even bring in that sweeping, uh, restricted of its own, uh, of their own uh, being that ditto, just going ahead, like you said, David, snap up any sort of boost as we are going to be seeing the leads leon does lead with the regality kyoga boss over on manuel's side we see the in intimidating incineroar accompanied by that mimic you yeah so i'm seeing a pretty neat way to get up trick room here at the moment just the classic fake out trick room so long as i maybe accepting it's going to go up here and just saying right whoever you don't target i'm going to get out a lot of damage whether that's the uh, the transistor boosted electric type of moves from Reshleki or a huge water spout from Kyogre here. So, yeah. um, out comes a fake out. No Serena switch mm. in either. And here's the damage. Oh, and we see a Volt switch from the Reshleki. It will be uh, breaking that Mimikyu's disguise. Its ability that could allow it to survive any sort of hit uh, uh, directed towards it, of course, until that disguise is broken. Getting that free pivot action going and the new fresh Pokemon on the field right now. So Trick Room is going to be going up. Let's not get around, ladies and gents. That is what Manuel's game plan is here. Having the Calyrex in the back is so, so good right now. As we do see the Incineral switching in, uh, which of course does get an Intimidate off, but has the potential of getting that pivot action once again going by going for, let's say, a U-turn or even a parting shot, dependent on what type of set that Incineral is. Yeah, so Leon kind of accepts Trick Room's going up here, which I think is fair. Uh, Manuel's obviously prepared to, eat, to do anything to get that up, so he might as well kind of let it go up. And now Manuel's kind of stuck on the field with Incineroar and a Mimikyu, which aren't the most offensive mm -hmm. Pokemon, especially when Incineroar's in the rain. So right. actually, Leon's kind of, kind of nicely kind of stalling out a bit here, especially as he's brought his own Incineroar in, especially if there were any switch outs on Manuel's end. He has now Fake Out going into this turn too. Mm -hmm. So um, he's kind of already nicely got a game plan to actually stall out the Trick Room here. And mm -hmm. Kyogre may even be able to get off a huge hit into this turn as well. Maybe a Phantom Force or a Play Rough out from the, the Mimikyu, but it's still going to be a big hit. 
All right, so Manuel doesn't opt to go for any hard switches right now because he knows there's a lot of offensive pressure on his opponent's side of the field. Goes for a Snarl to reduce the damage output of that Diodra. Does successfully land on the Incineral, whilst the opponent's Incineral goes for the Taunt, attempting to try to shut down uh, Manuel's Incineral, which doesn't even uh, flinch at that damage at all that it was able to incur from the Tyoga. Having this damage output reduced is so, so crucial. And to finally uh, finish it off, the Mimikyu did actually opt to go for the Shadow Claw to deal a bit more chip damage onto the Tyoga. Yeah, I'm really surprised how well that Incineroar took the hit there. So likely that Assault Vest on Incineroar, I think, um, based on how well it did take that. Yeah. Um, and I think Leon's going to be looking to maybe switch out his Kyogre here. It's definitely a nice option to have versus Calyrex as it does resist that ice and it, and is not weak to the high horsepower coverage that Calyrex is so often run. So, <laughs> and in it comes, speaking of... Oh, the Calyrex Ice Ride. I'm sorry, I wasn't sure if that was an alley-oop uh, set up right there. <laughs> Basketball terms, of course, David, but it was well, well laid up as we're going to be seeing the Tyoda switch out now on Leon's side for the Regieleki, wanting to save it in for future turns, as we are going to be seeing the Shadow Sneak self-side proc from the Mimikyu coming out, allowing this Calyrex to go straight up to plus two. Oh, wait, plus one now, thanks to the parting shot on Leon's uh, Incineral, which, of course, will be getting that pivot action going once again. So essentially what Leon's doing to try to mitigate this trick room, try to stall it out, is to try to get those very important switches in at the correct times as, wow, oh. David, we've got the ditto. Here it is. And what is that magic item going to be? That's what I'd really like to know. Uh, as you yeah. said, maybe a citrus berry could be nice here. I think as it's been brought, it's probably not a choice scarf, uh -huh. maybe a life orb as well. So, and you're copying that plus one attack too. However, Ditto does a very low base HP, so Calyrex uh -huh. on Manuel's side is likely still going to be able to do a lot of damage to it. Um, potentially even a double up might even KO, depending on the bulk that Manuel has invested in his own Calyrex to, that is then copied on the other side. Uh -huh. So, um, and Regilecki often carry the Focus Sash, so if that's a Focus Sash here too, then Regilecki might also lift the turn if there is no double up into it. So Leung's still in a position where he can dish out a lot of damage this turn, and he also has the switch into Incineroar to further reduce Manuel's attack damage of his own Calyrex and the Mimikyu on top of it. So he's still n nicely um, playing this, even though his Calyrex is set up and boosted. Yeah, Manuel's going to be bringing in the Incineroar for that Mimikyu slot there. We'll be able to get that Calyrex, or should I say the Ditto Calyrex, down to neutral of its attack, whilst Leon kind of goes for the same kind of strategy. Goes ahead and brings his own Incineroar, doing the exact same to Manuel's original Calyrex Ice Rider. So this is just going to be opening up the game to be seen pure damage from both sides as we see the high horsepower, oh my lord, pick up the KO at neutral onto the Incineral there, allowing it to get that chilling Nay boost, bringing itself back up to plus one of its attack as we are going to be seeing the Glacial Lands from Manuel's original Calyrex go into both of its opponent's uh, Pokemon and deal respectable chip damage, should I say, on that Incineral. Yeah, I think you should say respectable. It's pretty good. Um, and he does... Unfortunately, though, there is no high horsepower. If I think if there was maybe a high horsepower to that Reggie Lecky slot, you'd have been getting a lot of damage off him, which is probably what you need here. But as we saw the Glacial Lance, after now it's been brought back to neutral on Manuel's end, uh -huh. it's not really doing a lot of damage. And Luang has yet another fake out going to this turn as well. No psychic terrain to block it either. Uh -huh. No Serena on his end either to block it. So... Leon's really in the driver's seat here, and Trick Room is slowly running out, and that means that is a lot of just a ticking time bomb for this Kyogre to come in and do a lot of damage. Well, oh, exactly that. I'm talking about Kyogre. Here it is. It's trying to position itself quite well right now uh, as the Protect comes out from Manuel's Calyrex, and essentially, we've got a pin right here, ladies and gents. So if the Zapdos did not protect itself, it was pretty much always going to be susceptible to that Glacial Lance potential KO, especially a plus one. And it did allow that safe passage of the Kyogre switching in. So Leon just trying to take advantage of the situation and try to get that board position they want as both Trick Room and the Rain are now over. 
they are as well. So Young's, as you said, in the driver's seat right now. It be, I'm still really interested to see what the item on this uh, Calyrex is too, but hmm. um, it's it's still very much boosted. My models have no, no way of um, lowering its offense unless he switches this as Incin, but it's switching into a water move. But however, we've just seen the cargo switch straight back out into the Incineroar again. Yeah, so it's just the revolving door of Pokemon from Leon's side. It's you got to really appreciate the amount of strategy going into his plays. He's taking advantage of whatever he can, trying to get maximum output of each turn. As we see Heat Wave coming out from the Zapdos. Oh, picking up a burn. That could prove to be quite detrimental. As we see the Glacial Lands uh, coming out from Leon's. Uh, Ditto Calyrex moving first, allowing the Zapdos to survive, David. This could be quite detrimental as the high horsepower goes into the opponent's Ditto Calyrex and isn't enough to pick up a KO. That is a big burn there. And Zapdos sticking around is also pretty nice for Manuel, especially versus a Kyogre, depending on the item, I'd say, on Leon's end, whether it's that Choice Scarf or maybe it's something else. Because if the Zapdos is able to outspeed it at any point, it's able to probably deal the rest of the damage that it needs to on mm -hmm. top of what it's taken. I think the Kyogre's maybe at like, like two-thirds health at the moment, so it's definitely in range of something. But yeah. that just goes for another Protect here, keeping it safe from that Fake Out. Yeah, exactly that. So just wanting to safeguard itself, like you mentioned, David. Just kind of a slow play, but it makes a lot of sense because you've got that pressure right now that you were looking for, and it's going to be able to... Guard both your Pokemon from this threat of Leon's uh, Ditto Calyrex, which at this point just d misses out from getting KO'd from that burn chip damage. It does. So, uh, Manuel's in an interesting position. He, he probably wants to get up his Trick Room again because he's got the Mimikyu in the back and he knows that Leon's got his Kyogre in the back, which has probably got at least a bit of speed in it, if not Choice Scarf. So, um, however, he also knows that Young has his own. Calyrex there at the moment. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting to see if Leon actually chooses to maybe switch out his Ditto though, because it means that you could switch it in again, and if it's say an, an Incineroar that you're copying on Manuel's end, you can then copy the Intimidate, quickly get the Intimidate down, and then before you then go down to the burn. But here comes the Thunderbolt, which just picks it up. Yeah, picks up the KO there as Manuel is just going to be trying to opt to go for any sort of uh, KO that it can, if it can maybe pick it up on this Incineral before it gets KO'd in return, but no, it survives the Flare Blitz. That recoil damage brings that Incineral down to just below its halfway mark of HP, and yes, we have the Trick Room being set up yet again. So, Manuel, you see, uh, taking full advantage of that uh, move pull of both the Calyrex and the Mimikyu, being able to have that dual trick room setup mode on his side of the field. He is, and it's a good position to be in as well, especially as this Incineroar seems to be in range of a higher horsepower. Likely still that Focus Ash on this Regilecki based on how it's being played too, so it is able to survive a hit, um, whatever kind of it gets thrown out. And if, and if it's an Electro Web, it might even pick up a double KO depending on how bulky the Sapdos is too. So it's still in either player's court, I'd say, at the moment, but... And especially, like, Leung has his Kyogre. It's still looking very strong. But mm. I'd imagine Leung might want to switch out his Incineroar here so you can preserve the Intimidate and the Fake Out for both the um, Manuel's own Incineroar and Calyrex. So, but we no, we just see the straight up high horsepower. Yeah, high horsepower enough with a critical hit, of course, uh, to pick up the KO that I don't think that would have mattered at that range as we are going to be seeing the Grim Nay uh, boost procking on that Calyrex, making it that tiny bit stronger. And guess what, David? We have the reveal of Roost, which means it is not going down. The Zapdos is not going down to no Electroweb or any sort of Electro-type move, which the Calyrex will be doing so right now, allowing this Regilecki, due to that Volt Switch, to get that pivot and uh, essentially bring in... Uh, that Kyoda, perhaps, and then just have that free slot set up right now. Because quite interesting to see the Zapdos actually carrying that Roost. It is. I quite like it as well, because Zapdos in this format anyway seems like a, an excellent pick into some of the common support options that a lot of people are running, like Rillaboom, Urshifu as well, especially with that Rocky Helmet, plus the Static. You really mm -hmm. want to be switching in on all those little um, ship contact moves to really pick up... Uh, damage and 
paralysis without even moving. So if you're able to roost up of that, you're able to take even more hits and dish out even more damage from your Rocky Helmet. So I really like the combination there. And especially as now you may have been putting yourself out of range of Kyogre's very important, very strong water type attacks. Yeah. So, um, but we still haven't seen the interaction of the speeds between Zapdos, which is actually naturally faster than Kyogre, mm -hmm. and Kyogre, which is naturally obviously naturally slower, but is normally run a little bit faster. So, I imagine our trick routine, your Zapdos is probably a little bit slow, but let's see. Oh, Shadow Claw comes out from the Mimikyu, deals over half HP's worth onto the Regieleki. Zapdos proving to be slower than that Kyogre. Um, I think under Trick Room right now, unless that may have been a Shadow Sneak situation, but no, we get the confirmation. Regieleki does move last week. Of course, still are in Trick Room. Thunder comes out right there, picks up the KO on that Mimikyu, but unfortunately for this Regieleki, it seems like it will not be able to 1v1 this roosting Zapdos. No, unless we get some very powerful critical hits potentially here, mm. but Trick Room is still True. up and Zapdos is able to go for more hits this turn. It still might live a Thunderbolt though. Um, and as we do see the Protect, so Young is able to stall out a little bit oh. few more turns of Trick Room. But yeah. uh, if the rain is running out, then your Thunder's not going to get very accurate either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very um, true. I think in this situation, it's just going to be about, like you said, uh, wasting away the Trick Room turns, but you're also wasting away the turns of Rain. Yeah, so it's it's probably Manuel's Quarter at the moment here, and especially with the Roosting, I think you're going to need at least one critical hit to be able to break through the, the Roost cycling going on now. But here yeah. we go, here comes this Thunder. Yeah, it comes the thunder indeed, David deals so much. Oh my lord, it doesn't even deal that much damage. I was about to, I was about to go crazy about the amount of damage it just dealt, but it did not because this Zapdos is so bulky. It is well trained. It just needs to uh, protect itself, quite literally. Yeah, thanks to that, the roost going before the thunder, it's able to get rid of its flying type effectiveness and become pure electric just for that little turn. So it's able to hit that thunder really nicely, and now it's also stalled out the rain. So. Um, we know it's probably going to do double damage this time, this next Thunder, and that may still actually be enough, but it is only 70% accurate at the moment. Oh, and that accuracy proving to be true, as it did miss, unfortunately, and the Heat Wave, now that the Rain Dance is gone, does guarantee that KO, since it did land, of course, and Zapdos just proving to be quite a bulky flying electric beast, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it really has. Uh, it really kind of pulled it back in that game there. Getting yeah. the really crucial burn on that Calyrex as well. Or, sorry, the Ditto, rather. True. Um, and, be, and which then eventually just chipped it down, so it got KO'd. So an excellent bring in the late game for Manuel. So mm. I'd be interested to see if it gets brought again, because looking at Leung's team, it has actually has a, a fantastic matchup. It's weak to rock and ice, right? And yeah. if it's a choice scarf Kyogre at all, you've got to lock into ice, which just frees up the rest of your Pokemon. So mm -hmm. it is a really nice bring here. Um, that being said, the Dittos did cause a lot of problems for Manuel um, if it had if he hadn't got the burn on it. And I think that the game would have really run away with it uh, without it, potentially. So yeah. um, he's still got to be really aware of it. And... One way of potentially getting around that is making sure you're putting your Incineroar in at the right time to uh -huh. um, get a new fake out in, get to reduce the damage output of whatever Ditto's copied potentially. Yep. So let's get into this next game. Game two, Spain versus Hong Kong. And Spain is one game away for taking the win. Exactly, as we're going to be seeing the Regieleki and Kyogre lead once again, accompanied by the same on Manuel's side with that Mimikyu and Incineral, just essentially guaranteeing the Trick Room is set up. So, uh, what do you expect from both trainers here? Any sort of ad adaptation or exact same situation as Game 1, David? Yes, yeah, it's, it's looking very similar at the moment. I would expect still, say, the fake out into Kyogre, but I wouldn't, like, Manuel doesn't necessarily need to set up the Trick Room, uh, like, or maybe maybe he does because Kyogre is still very strong at the moment. Uh, like Regilecki and, and Kyogre are still very strong at the moment. You kind of have to respect both of these very strong options and get up your trick room. It's just about how you respond to the Calyrex potentially or the Ditto coming in on the the next following turn. But let's see what Volt Switch ends up switching out into. 
But yeah, I think so far it is looking to be a mirror like a situation of the exact same moves occurring from both these trainers. This may even be the incineral makes a lot of sense you don't get the intimidate off onto the calibre since of course it's not on the field but what you do get is that pivot action going as we do of course get the confirmation that incineral is on leon's side of the field and to be honest the mimic is very free to go for the trick room again yep Druid Group comes straight up, which does allow Manuel to go for his lovely Snarls again. And as it, maybe you can't get faked out, you can Shadow Claw into the opposing Kyogre to reduce its damage output from any further water spouts. Which, um, but now the clock is ticking on this Druid Group. He wants to really make the most of it. And so getting in Calyrex now could be really key because you're getting in before after the Incineroar of Leung's end has already switched in, so it can't be intimidated immediately. But Amoogus is the oh, switch. Very interesting switch there, as we are going to be seeing the fake out from Leung's side move first, and we have the focus onto that Incineroar with the Scald there, not even wanting to risk any sort of uh, damage reduction from a powered water spout there, just opting to go for the Scald, but it's not enough. Just like we, uh, you had mentioned in the game one, that Assault Fest, truly paying dividends right there absolutely yes now interestingly Leung has revealed taunt on his incineroar in game once which is probably a nice way to be shutting down any trick room or especially an amoongus and we also i'm not sure if we saw the item on the incineroar either potentially the safety goggles through help with the amoongus matchup because otherwise it's looking very shaky if you're not bringing your serena but calyrex mm -hmm. have just been immediately switched in and an incineroar is also just kind of going straight out yeah, as we are going to be seeing the Regieleki right now uh, find itself on the field, but not on its own, as the Ditto is coming out yet again uh, from Leon's side. It is going to be copying that Calyrex Ice Rider, not with any sort of boosts right now, but with a lot of pressure. It definitely is. I, I don't know if uh, Leon read that completely, because I think he was he was probably aiming for the switch and for the Amoogus, but he ends up um getting the the calyrex instead which is obviously still pretty good you get your opponents restricted you've got access to trick room now so you can even reverse it for yourself so okay. it's looking pretty nice but now i'll go for the cool u-turn side switch i love it yeah you gotta love it it has a lot of um flexibility in the sort of plays that you can make there it does, and now uh, Manuel's in a really nice position because Trick Room is still up and he's got the Amoogus in exactly where he wants to be now. And he knows what Leung's Calyrex is moves is going to have because Leung's just copied Manuel's completely. Um, yeah. And Reggie Lecky doesn't want to take the spore out, although it does hope. It is likely that Focus Sash that uh, is often commonly run, but Manuel's definitely in the driver's seat when it comes to this game at the moment. And if you're switching in Incineroar, which may have that safety goggles, it's on very low health at the moment. So it's going to be taking, it's probably going to get KO'd um, even if you switch it in. So it's, you kind of need that free switch for the Incineroar so you can apply that fake out pressure as well. But Leung does go for a switch. Yeah, going for the switch, bringing that Incineroar in, wanting to try to mitigate that Calyrex's uh, damage output as much as possible. It is now still gonna be a plus one, so it is threatening a lot of damage. This may even be risky, but wait, it's not. We see the Spore successfully landing into that incineral slot, and this Calyrex just goes for the raw glacial lands, just wanting to pick off any sort of damage onto both sides of the field of uh, Leon's side, of course, both Pokemon, as we actually see a Focus Sash being revealed there, allowing it to survive and to get that Vault Switch off, getting that pivot action going. But David, that Spore just made too much sense in that slot, and Leon was caught out by Manuel there. Absolutely. A, a huge play there. Um, and Cinderella is just completely shut down. It can't even wake up this turn either. This Calyrex is boosted like to skyrocketed attack levels at this point. It's already got very high attack. It, it's even higher thanks to that weakness policy boost. Um, and Amoogus can do not really much this turn, to be honest. Now Ditto has come in. But um, it's still being shut down like that with the Calyrex still at a lot of health on Manuel's end. It's not what you want to see because it's such a bulky Pokemon and Incineroar is probably the main way to do a lot of damage to it when the rain's gone and to reduce its damage. And now you don't have that parting shot anymore. All you can do is switch it in and out for Intimidate and that's about it now. 
So, yep. but Leung smartly does switch in his own Amoongus, uh, thanks to that ditto copying it, so yeah. maybe there is still a way out. There may be indeed, as we are going to be seeing the Calyrex aware of this, going for the Protect. It does not want to get spored just yet, as the Spore coming out from Manuel Zamundius yet again into the same slot. So Manuel playing uh, quite well, to be honest, catching that switch, wanting to go for the slot just in case it did occur, as the rain is now over and Manuel has a lot of pressure, but needs to be careful of that Amundus. He does. Trick Room has now expired, though, as well. So Calyrex is able to go on the offensive and deal with this Amoongus, unless it's unless it's Focus Sash Ditto, which would be interesting. But I, I, if I remember, I'm betting it's probably not. Um, so you're able to get a, probably a KO with that Glacial Lance. But yeah, an excellent target by Mamel too. Um, he didn't have a lot of reason to switch out Amoongus there. And if like, and if Leong switches to try and get a better ball position, he gets punished for it. So and that's exactly what happens. Yeah, exactly, as we're going to be seeing the Incineral switching in right now, so just wanting to further reduce that damage output. And um, better position uh, himself, have that Ditto in the back in case he uh, wants to go for any sort of uh, transformations after, as we do see the Glacial Lands coming out. The Kyoda did take its turn of sleep there. Um, we'll be dealing very good chip damage. So even if it is resisted, of course, both of the Pokemon, it makes a lot of sense. And guess what? We see the side Pollen Puff, all of the support for this Calyrex, and it's just working off so well for Manuel. It is definitely. Leon looks like he's been really caught off guard by the Amoongus kind of uh, switch up in this game too, because it's just like, it, all it is, it's just it's just a Moongus in Trick Room, and that's it. It's it's just like throwing spores out left, right, and center. The Incineral's not even safety goggles. Yeah. It's just it's supporting the team very nicely. And even with that, like, that dual purpose, pol like Pollen Puff as well, Calyrex is now back at full health again and can live any hit, even from this Kyogre. Yeah, as we're going to be seeing the Ice Beam, of course, going into the Amoongus slot. Uh, like you said, it's not able to get that two-hit KO right there. The uh, uh, high horsepower did a lot of damage, actually, to that Amoongus. So just showing why it is such a strong Pokemon. And the Kyoda, unfortunately, is put back to sleep. Yeah, put back to sleep. And interestingly, I've just kind of realized like, we've had so many turns in this game, but like both players still have taken no knockouts <laughs> like, no. <laughs> it's, been, it's been like a, a really interesting game of like just switching out and just board positioning um putting things to sleep intimidating things sorting out trick room um but we can i can kind of see now mammals kind of getting into the position now where like there's a few things asleep now that incinero's mm -hmm. in the back asleep kyoko's asleep now can't wake up this turn either um and this i don't think there was any further trick room that's gone up either so uh, this Amoongus slash Ditto is still able to get knocked out. Yeah, as the Incineral comes back in, it's just there right now to maybe try to wake up if it can, but more importantly, to try to limit what this Calyrex can do and maybe even catch a Spore, uh, you know, uh, Spore targeted slot right there, just in case since it's already asleep. We see the Amoongus uh, going for the Protect on Leon's side and that Pollen Puff uh focus actually on the amundus so really good protect there from leon's amundus as we had the high horsepower in combination with the pollen puff coming out yeah i like that so Calyrex is covering manuel is covering for another switch in of some sorts but glacial lance seems like pretty safe there um in general as you're able to pick it off anyway plus hit the side target as well which you want to do eventually but yeah, uh, yeah incineral takes another turn to sleep now, another turn of sleep, and guess what? This Calyrex is moving first, and it is threatening a lot of damage and a KO on the Amundis. So, Manuel, slowly yet surely, running away with this game, but he's going to be very cautious of that Ditto in the back, and the fact that it can easily switch in when it wants to, as we're going to be seeing the Pollen Puff, enough to pick up the KO on the Incineral. So, Leon has to make sure that they have the correct pokemon brought in to the correct slot right now because they do have that ditto so reggie lecky has now switched in and we do see yeah just the kyoga left because ditto was that amoongus so oh, it God, just not me i'm an idiot <laughs> just went straight down to that glacial lance so very sorry to say costa ditto is gone um rip, rip my dreams 
<laughs> but Galarex is still looking very healthy. And then, as we know, yeah. this Kargan actually hasn't even taken any turns to sneak. So it's just on this Regilecki now to be able to do damage in this turn. But it does go for the safe protect. Yeah, it does for the safe protect. The Rage Powder makes a lot of sense here from uh, just trying to make sure that you try to uh, redirect any sort of threat onto this Calyrex. As Calyrex doesn't care, it just goes for the Trick Room. It knows that it has the guaranteed safety of going and doing so because Manuel has absolutely trumped this uh, game to been able to just focus down in the correct situations and get that Trick Room set up only when it is safe. After it's essentially put everything to sleep, went ahead and gave himself and Spain that very crucial win over Hong Kong. Exactly. And a masterfully played game in that game too as well. Just being able to, even though how Zapdos did so much work in that game one, he just leaves it on the bench for game two, brings in the yep. Amoongus and completely takes Leon completely off guard, I think. Um, and was able to use it with great effect. Just doing Amoongus things, redirecting away those hits you don't want to be hit by, mm -hmm. putting everything to sleep and even healing up your own calyrex and your own restricted so it did exactly yeah. the work manuel hoped it would do and it paid off it really did because it had a lot of uh utilities to it uh, both threatens with sleeps uh for example the emergency it threatens with sleeps it threatens with actually redirection i say threatens but it's a passive uh threatened situation being able to guarantee that trick room for example and then it has the pollen puff where you can just go ahead and heal up that Calyrex, like we saw in game two, it was just able to just revitalize itself and say, you know what, I'm in the mood for another trick room. Let's go ahead and try to wrap it up. That's essentially what Manuel did. He played it absolutely well. And um, huge props, of course, to Leon there, trying to play to their outs. But when you go up against such a heavy orientated trick room team, it's quite difficult uh, to come out of that matchup unless you have that game plan. It is, and but like Manuel Barrea of Spain is now three and zero in, in all of his sets for his team, so he's very much a very valued player for them. So yeah, and taking Spain into a even higher heights now into this World <laughs> Cup, so uh, we're expecting great things from them, I'm sure. But Hong Kong, having got in to the qualifier stage as well, uh, into the group stages, is still pretty good to say the least and oh, yeah. they've still got seven games left of their stages so yeah. uh, keep an eye on the world cup doc match list on the website and to check how both teams are doing in this final few days of the week well exactly victory road has all of the information that uh, is needed and provided to your door to your website should i say uh of course visit the website like david mentioned he's got all the information you ever need a lot of hard work put into that and um that's essentially gonna be us for today this has been victory road the world cup of pokemon vgc sponsored by El Gato. So we've absolutely uh, enjoyed today. We hope you lovely people have at home as well. And of course, we will be catching you tomorrow. So don't go anywhere. We have another huge set of fiery matches coming your way. We hope you have a lovely night. Thank you.